What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. If you guys thought I forgot about the SFL and all of our subscriber players in this series, boy, you were dead wrong. It was really just bad timing. Of course, the new College Football 25 game came out. I dropped a new series in that. Got to make sure I stay up with the times, you know, as a content creator. And that game's actually really fun. I didn't think I would like it too much because I'm not a huge college football fan. But I am having a blast with the whole recruiting system. Getting my ass kicked in the gameplay. Uh, if you want to check out that series, Akron Zips, not a football school. And we are doing a dynasty with them. So if you want to go check out that series, I'll link a card up at the top. You guys can go check it out. Also had a trip, a uh, family trip planned to Michigan. Right around the time, like days after College Football 25 dropped, literally. So couldn't take my equipment there. I came back. I was in a rush to put videos together, record, edit, etc., etc. So it was a lot. But we are right back like we never left here in the SFL. And oh yeah, that's right. We are 0-2. I I wish I would have forgot that, but it's all coming back to me now. Winless so far on the season. And we also take on the San Diego Aviators who... You guys remember, they were the one seed last year in the AFC, and they lost to the six seed Salt Lake City Bisons that we ended up beating to move on and win the Super Bowl. So there's some sort of storyline now. Aviators now have five subscribers on that team. We're going to get a look at them. We're going to highlight the roster here. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. Getting a look at the Aviators roster here. They got, of course, subscriber Cameron Moore at the helm as QB. Old man Russ just wasn't cutting it, so they had to go ahead and bench him. And Cameron's a really good player, third in the SFL right now in passing yards at 613. So he is doing his thing. He's a strong arm archetype quarterback, and I exited out of his screen by mistake. He's a strong arm rated uh, archetype quarterback, 93 throw power, 94 deep accuracy, Pretty good in the medium range as well, and my man's got a little bit of wheels with the 88 speed, but all in all, he's probably going to be tearing up our suspect defense here of the Thunderbirds. Dual subscriber, wide receivers in the backfield here for the Aviators, superstar Dev now, Aiden Leslie and Nico Petey, both of them look really, really good, 84 rated overall and 83 rated overall, Aiden here. Nice to see him get a dev up. I think that's our first subscriber that's actually earned a dev up, so that's pretty cool. He's an 84 rated overall elusive back with the 94 speed and the 94 acceleration. Can also catch the ball at a pretty high level for a halfback as well. I mean, really, there's not anything that he really struggles with. Maybe not really a power back, but I think our guy Nico Petey here may be that. No, he's elusive as well, but he also is almost equally as good as, as Leslie. 94 speed, 92 acceleration, 92 agility. Uh, can't catch the ball as well as Aiden, but still, regardless of who they have in the backfield behind the quarterback, I think it is going to be a tough, tough task today. They're a little thin at receivers, but of course, with the injuries being off this uh, season of the SFL, not going to really matter. They got Mike Evans and Cortland Sutton. Pretty good one-two punch. Sam Laporta and old man Zach Ertz are the tight ends, offensive line, David Bakhtiari, he's probably thanking his lucky stars that the injuries are off here in the SFL because my man can just never stay healthy huh? in real life. Brady Christensen, not the best left guard, but a decent option. Ethan Pochich, the uh, Cleveland Brown, he's a decent center, 79 overall. John Runyon, former Green Bay Packer, Michigan Wolverine, he's a 78 overall rated player. And then George Fant, so their offensive line is okay. Carl Granderson, who leads the SFL in sacks at 3.5. He's not a subscriber. I, I wish. That'd be cool. Carl, if you're watching, please subscribe. Please like the video. I would love to have you in the SFL, but he's pretty good. But speaking of subscribers, we got Mr. Not Oreo here. First defensive end in the SFL. He's an 80 rated overall speed rusher with the 89 finesse moves and the 86 speed. He is going to be in hot pursuit to the quarterback, probably play after play. And interesting to see how a, a subscriber defensive end plays in gameplay. Ali McNeil and Montrevious Adams are the defensive tackles. Linebackers, they got uh, rookie and real, you know, one year, man, I guess. Football season's about to start. Tui Tua Piloto, uh, Tremaine Edmonds, who leads the SFL in tackles. 
and Juwan Bentley as well are the middle linebackers. And then Joey Bosa, always a reliable option at the defensive end position and cornerbacks. They are solid. Jair Alexander, Darius Williams, and then subscriber Dior Love here, who was at 83 rated overall or playing up to, I should say, a 83 man-to-man -man archetype. And he's got 94 speed, 82 man coverage, 92 jumping, and 83 catching. It may be pick city for uh, Jordan Love here today, playing against a stacked San Diego Aviators secondary. And of course, gotta highlight our newest subscriber here in the SFL. Guys, we are up to 51 subscribers in this SFL league. That is friggin' awesome. I know the Madden 24 cycle is more or less dead at this point, but we are gonna have a Madden or a Madden 25 iteration of the SFL. So if you would like to join, you know, this SFL version, the Madden 25 version, whatever the case may be, comment down below. I will leave a pinned comment. Also join the Discord, man. There's lots of cool stuff going on. I keep track of stats and records and everything like that. So it's just a good time. But we got Mr. C. Tucker here. Josh Allen bumped him down to a 73. Coach was like, look, Josh, you just cannot get your team to the big game. You cannot get them to the Super Bowl. So move over. We got C. Tucker here in the building. Shout out at Caleb Tucker 2189 in the comments. He is an improviser, kind of a Lamar Jackson-esque type of player. I would say, look at that 99 throw on the run, that 95 short accuracy. He can also throw under pressure as well. And he's got the speed to back it up. I mean, really, I would say awareness is about the only thing which uh, maybe you could say that about Lamar Jackson. Playoff Lamar Jackson, yes. <laughs> Low awareness, regular season Lamar Jackson, high awareness. But either way, C. Tucker here looks good. And the Virginia Beach Blues were already a good team last season. They might be even better. I think they were the two seed, I want to say, in the NFC. So they may be even better now. But, hey, we got some work to do, guys. San Diego Aviators, five subscribers on this team, looking to keep us winless. And we are on Monday night primetime as well. So the cameras are going to be on. The lights are going to be shining bright. And we don't want to go 0-3 on the season. So if you guys are fired up for the SFL series and you are loving this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember, at 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do an NFL jersey giveaway. We're so close. We're at like 930 or something like that, or 940, I think, as of recording this. So if you're watching this and you're here, please subscribe. But without further ado, let's get on down to San Diego and get ready for the game. Aviators are going to get the ball first, so we're going to get to see quarterback Cameron Moore, halfback Nico Petey, halfback Aiden Leslie. These subscribers are going to be trying to keep us winless on the season. And we got to do everything in our power to not let that happen. So we get a look at Cameron Moore here again, third in the SFL in passing yards and a five to one touchdown interception ratio. Much better than our quarterback, who I believe is four and three. And we'll have to see what kind of stuff Cameron Moore and the boys have today. I imagine that this one will not be easy at all. So we're going to press up on the line. Aiden Leslie is in the backfield. So we're going to use her up on Antoine Winfield. Nice spin move there. Could have been deadly, but luckily there were some T-Birds in there to stop him, but still a nice pickup of seven from Aiden. Try zone here for a little while. See how that goes. I may uh, switch it up and go to man. Good open field tackle there by Winfield and also Denzel Perryman had uh, at least a hand, hand tackle on Aiden and that is going to bring up a third and two. Can we get them off of the field though? That's the question. I almost want to run commit up the middle I'm not going to do it, though, because I'm just afraid I would get burned, and I guess I should have, because Aiden Leslie is able to move the chains, picking up a nice first down, getting this to the 41-yard line. Let's go a little nickel blitz here. want to keep the pressure on Moore. Haven't really seen him do anything as a runner yet, but that does not mean that he cannot do that. He's got that speed. We talked about it at the beginning of the episode, but just going to go ahead and check it down to Leslie for a gain of two. Matt Milano, arguably our best defensive player, is there to uh, to wrap him up and make the tackle. Let's guess pass here. We're pressing up slightly on the outside. We'll use her up on Mr. Milano. It's another game. give to Leslie. Gets very close to the marker, but that is going to be a third down. And can we get him off the field? We were not able to the last time they were in this position. And I think uh, we're going to go blitz. We're going to go pressure. And again, just kind of assume that it's going to be a run. So I'm going to use her up on Winfield, Bruh. and it is a run. But Leslie, he might be off to the races. I think that he is. So, okay, Aiden, if you're watching this, you just put us on the George Foreman. 
and cooked us on that one. And that was a scary, scary drive by the Aviators because we gave them a little bit of adversity, right? Getting into third down, but they were able to overcome it every time. And if that's what we're going to have to deal with on the ground game with Leslie and also Nico Petey, could be in for a long game here, folks. Jordan Love, a.k.a. me. Stop throwing picks, man. I mean, three and two games isn't the worst thing if he had the touchdowns to back it up. But four and three is just not a good ratio at all. And to complement the semi-struggling passing game, I think that we have to find a way to get our subscriber running back Tubby McDouble involved. Let's just have him run behind Kyle Juszczyk and They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You a nice block would be grand, and unfortunately it's not there. Tubby's not able to pick up anything. How about a little play action here out of the single back? We gotta watch that blitzer off of the edge. That might just be Joey Bosa, or maybe, no, that's uh, that's not Oreo, the subscriber. Gotta watch him. Hopefully we can hit possibly uh, Zay Jones on this one, which... Says it was a touch pass, but there's no way that we shouldn't have been able to get it over the head of Jair Alexander. And unfortunately, we were not. So that's third and ten. It's not a very good drive here. Let's uh, curl Olave. Got to remember, I can't custom stem routes like in like in uh, college football 25. Got to get that out of my brain. But maybe Olave is the read on the curl. I think he is. We're going to give him a shot. Bang. Chris Olave sure handed as always. That was a clutch, clutch first down conversion. See if we can just get some positive yards here going. Screen pass to Tubby seems like a good idea, although heavy pressure is there. And we just had to go ahead and jump it off. It's not Oreo, number 73, getting in there to make his presence known. And, you know, I talked about it in the pregame, but this is a stacked, really a stacked roster all around. Not even just their defense, just a stacked roster all around. And maybe uh, we can get Mike Oxmall going on little RPO will motion out St. James just in case that uh, corner there follows us. I think it is going to be Mike on RPO. Yeah, I mean, it's a good positive play of five, I guess. But another third down upcoming for the T-Birds. Really got to find a way to pick this up here. Let's curl Olave again, but I might like actually St. James or maybe Waller on the drag. It's Waller if we can get it over the head. Oh, my God. Thank my freaking lucky stars that Jawan Bentley, number 59 there, didn't turn around. Because if he did, he had an easy pick in his pocket. But instead, it's Darren Waller dancing all over the 41-yard line with a huge conversion. That I love to see. I think we'll go RPO again uh, just until, you know, we start seeing some positive plays here. I'm not really going to be looking to, to air it out too much, I don't think. So Mike Oxmall on the RPOs. Might just be the move for a little while, as we are able to pick up six, and I'm totally okay with that. Ball's on the 35-yard uh, line here of the Aviators. We're going to go single back and tubby on the draw. I just need some blockers. Thank you. I, I will take that. It's been a struggle, man, getting the running game established. Tubby doing a good job there, but we were pretty much dominant in that area last season, and I think that's what led to a lot of our success. Also, Jordan Love, I mean, he had 19 picks last season. Okay but had a lot more touchdowns. So first and 10, I think we'll go play action here. Maybe look for our tight end, Darren Waller, or perhaps just... It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Roll out. I tried to throw it away, and that is not Oreo, the subscriber, bringing us down for a loss of six. And here on third and five, I mean, guess some, some slant routes maybe... The move, although I'm not 100% sold on it. I do kind of like Waller up the middle, though. So maybe he's our first read. No, it's going to be Olave open on the curl. But what a diving, diving attempt there by Darius Williams. That should have been us all the way. But he just Superman dove out of nowhere. And unfortunately, our first offensive drive is going to end in a field goal. And boy, I am so used to the college kicking system, man. Oh, it's going to be tough. If you guys have played college football 25, the kicking is much, much different. It's going to take some getting used to going back and forth between these games. And the last thing I can afford to do is be missing kicks. So got to lock in here and remember that we are in Madden land currently. And it's looking like uh, Cameron Moore and these aviators are just going to be content to go to the ground game, which, hey, I don't blame them if it's if it's working. 
continue to go to it. Will this be Leslie again? It will. We're there with Winfield. But even that, a nine-yard gain, he is picking us apart in a big, big way. Almost want more to go to the passing game now uh, because so far the running game is just tearing us limb for limb. Aiden Leslie showing off the fancy footwork. Going to move the chains, and he is now at eight for 96 and seemingly just cannot be stopped. We don't have an answer for him so far as he's been able to do whatever the hell he wants to back there. And wouldn't be surprised if this is a give to Aiden again, which this time it's not. Could be Aiden on the check down, and there was some pressure. That was Matt Milano, again, always calling his name. And that was only Cameron Moore's second pass of the game, too. Bring a spy in here, just, if nothing else, to sit there and guard the middle of the field and watch Aiden Leslie. But, of course, it's going to be a pass now, and that is going to be... Uh, Mike Evans, that was kind of a weird, he had to really adjust for that. It wasn't the most accurate pass by Moore, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it does get the job done. Boy, this game is, this game's going about as bad as it possibly could. I mean, the only thing that hasn't happened yet is a pick six, and that's probably coming before we know it. Nobody out there on the outside, nobody guarding Michael Wilson, the wide receiver out of Stanford. First down again for San Diego. This team's just, uh... Kind of got me stumped, guys. I got to be honest. This is a good team. We know that from last year. So they're definitely not a pushover or anything like that. Speaking of pushover, Aiden Leslie pushing guys over as he has 109 yards in the first quarter. Yes, you heard me right. 109 in the first quarter. We'll see if this is the last play. This game actually feels like it should be so much, so much further away. But it still is only a four-point game for now. But we got to, I mean... Coming out of halftime, we are shifting our focus to defending the run 123.4%. It's got to be pressure here, but still, I just feel like no matter what they do, it's going to work. And yeah, it's a chess game. And uh, I think Brandon Staley was their coach. Yeah, this team used to be the Chargers. They're in the AFC West. So Brandon Staley is pretty much saying checkmate after every drive. I could have, I was fully confident that was going to be a run. And of course it wasn't. And now we find ourselves down 14 to three. Let's try Kareem on this one. I do like the uh, the defensive coverage that they have out there, but I don't like the fact that Tremaine Edmonds just comes in unblocked. And it's a loss of two. And boy, this has been a bad month for running the football. I can't I can't get it going on on college football either. You know the running game is just for whatever for whatever reason it's just not working right now. And I don't like it. Not a fan of it. So third and seven. Got to pick this up. Who's going to get open? It is going to be nobody because it's Buda Baker coming in on the blitz. And uh, we got to punt the blitz. Can't go for it here on the 17. So what a waste. It Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Jack Mavro's back in. That's good. He wasn't, he wasn't in last week. It was Justin Tucker. But what a waste to drive. And the way that San Diego's driving the ball. Looking like they may go up uh, 21 to 3. Unless our defense can pull a rabbit out of their hat. It's going to be Leslie. No, it's a quarterback keeper. And nobody's there. And Moore is about to punish us in a big, big way, I think. Bumble would be nice. Not going to get it. But this ground attack for the Aviators is lethal. We have no answers for it. And they're about to go up probably 21 to 3. We need a pick in just the absolute biggest way possible here. Don't think we're going to get it. But you know what? A guy can dream, can't he? Pressure on Moore. He's getting flushed out. We know that he can run. And wide open there is the receiver, Michael Wilson. And they do, in fact, go up 21 to 3. So, uh, Aviators subscribers, if you're watching, congrats. I uh, don't like you right now <laughs> at all. I like you for being subscribed to this channel. I don't like you for the team that I'm playing. And, I mean, what happened to the Thunderbirds, man? We are witnessing. It's still early in the season. 0-3. I don't know the percentage of teams that start 0-3 making the playoffs. I imagine it's probably pretty low. But there still is a whole lot of season to go. But you just get the feeling that something's, uh, something's a little different in the air here in Toronto. Coach is saying screen. And right now, if it's not screen or RPO, I don't really feel confident about it, so hopefully, uh, oh God, the pressure is real, but Tubby catches it. Good enough blocking on the edge. We're gonna pick up eight, and a gain of eight for us is like a gain of 25 for the Aviators. All right, Tubby, I believe in you. Just need two hard-fought yards, and he's gonna get it and more. 
So that's good. I mean, really, Tubby's averaging five yards per carry, so it's small sample size, right? Only uh, four attempts. But so I, I don't know. It's it's a weird yeah. game. Like, you oh, feel like God. the running game's not working, and then you look at the stats, and it kind of is. But I don't know. We've just been having to really uh, pretty much go past most of the time. And there's Darren Waller making a nice catch. And he is, I believe that's his, that's his first catch, second catch. I don't know. I know he had one at least on the, I think, the first drive. But regardless, we're deep into Aviators territory now. And drive looking pretty good to start. Then go back here. We're going to roll out and just hopefully hit somebody, anybody. St. James, you're the target, my man. Oh, God, crunched by Tremaine Edmonds. <laughs> but we got a good shot here, but just got to lock in and find the open target. It's St. James again, making men miss, pushing forward. And if that's a first down, wow. That is a heck of an effort there. Should have been stopped about two, three yards shy. And through sheer will and determination, he was able to get a first down. And we really, really needed that. Now, part of me wants to audible Oxmo, but we're just going to go running game. And Tubby may actually have the lanes. That block got shed there. Very nice by Jawan Bentley, but still another good gain of six. Feel good about the draw play here, Tubby. Please don't let me down. And please, someone just give me good blockers. Thank you. We needed that so bad. Wow, finding pay dirt for the first time. Tubby McDouble, who is, he is a uh, check the good old Discord, which you guys should join if you haven't already, because I got stats. Tubby is tied for fourth in the SFL for rushing touchdowns. Only two, but it's still three now, so... He may be up close to the top. And wow, wow, wow. That just takes a lot of the pressure off of us as we're able to find the pay dirt. But now can our defense stop or even really just slow down the Aviators' high-powered running offense? Yeah, look at that, man. 110 total yards. And it is not even halftime yet. And that just scares the ever-living daylights out of me. So I'm going to be doing a lot of... User adjusting, uh, double teaming on Aiden Leslie, which of course, now that I do that, second I do that, it's a passing play. That one's only going to be one yard though to Laporta. I just really, really need to get the Aviators off the field here, please. I will be a good boy for the rest of my life. You have my word. Pressure up the middle is what we're doing, what we're going with, and no, just a great curl route by Mike Evans, and he might score. Thank God Antoine Winfield made the tackle. If you're new to the series, I, I can't preface this enough. We won the gosh dang Super Bowl last season, first season of the SFL. And you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at this performance and why is Laportis just so open. I know we were blitzing on that side, but still, someone's got to be there in coverage. I think that we uh, may have to, first of all, option defense conservative. And let's kind of drop the flats back 10 yards. Because we need some we need some people there to to watch these little dink and dunk routes because I'm about sick of seeing those. It's audible into man. And please let's get some good man coverage and not allow Aiden Leslie to tear us up. That's Laporta again. Maybe a good idea to call a timeout, although I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to incentivize the touchdown for the aviators. I would really, really like them to just kick a field goal here in this situation. So I don't want to give them more time than they already have. Miles Garrett was holding a good block. It's incomplete pass. Now it's third and four. Do we trust zone? I mean, we're going to have to because that's what I'm rocking with. I feel like we've been getting carved up. Whether it's man or zone doesn't really matter. More leaking wow. out. Leonard Floyd is there. But again, just the sheer will and determination by Cameron Moore. Uh, they're coming out zero wide receivers as well, which is good. I like to go 60 out jacks blitz in this situation. And there's... Big number 35, Nico Petey. Will he be able to punch this in? No, it's a fullback dive. Their fullback, uh, Gabe Neighbors, and he's tackled there by Perryman. And they're, all, again, not using a timeout, or will they? Uh, they're not gonna, but this is a very, very difficult situation. I'm having Matt Milano go to the outside here for sure, and it's Cortland Sutton. I mean, give it up. That was great clock management. They leave us with almost no time to respond. Not even going to try anything with nine seconds. You know, maybe I'll try a screen or something like that, if that. But uh, got a lot of work to do here in the second half, guys. This one is not pretty at all. I'm going to at least see if I can get Olave on press or something, which I actually do. Okay. Intriguing. Uh, there's a chance. <laughs> We're going to give him a shot here. If you show me that corner... 
he kind of did go away from Olave. Does Olave have it? He had it in his hands and dropped it. But now Zay Jones getting it. They really are testing me here. I mean, look, it doesn't hurt to try. Uh, we're going to see maybe if Zay Jones beats press, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Zay caught it. Oh, my God, Zay. Please go. Wow, you got to be kidding me. They showed press both times. And that is why, kids, you at least come out in plays like that and you check coverages because you just never know. Zay Jones is a weapon. We know that. But now, if if he wouldn't have been pressed, if the corner would have been play, playing off on him, I would have just audible it to a run. But both times, our outside receiver, they showed press. Jordan Love or Chris Olave really was not able to capitalize on the first one. But Zay Justin Jones, oh my God. Point. And that is way more huge than you might think because now we do get the ball back after halftime. Chance to really, really close the gap on this scoreboard. And I, I can't believe that just happened. I'm I'm really in awe right now. But you see the uh, rushing yards, huge disparity there. Passing yards, we do have the edge, of course. And getting a look at uh, games around the league here, you can check and see if your subscriber played in any of those games. I believe, yeah, we're Monday. Are we Monday night? We are, I think it said Monday night football, I believe. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, don't know why those Sunday games would still be on there. I can't remember what it said. But at any rate, those are the those are the uh, scores around the SFL. And we are going to make throw, or should we do, I'm going to do run inside. Got to get that established. And then also, I'm, I'm scared to defend the rush because I know what can happen. Uh, defend the inside run, defend the outside run. We'll go ahead and defend the inside run, but that just means the outside runs really, really scare me. Let's see how well that uh, inside run focus is going to prove to be as we are going to go draw to Tubby. I mean, Tremaine Edmonds is a weapon. You know, he is, he is that guy. He's a dude. He is a gentleman and a scholar. So you can only really do so much, right? And I think we're going to try RPO, although Jair Alexander is out there. Don't really like... Him being the one that's on coverage, and of course, we didn't uh, make outside run our focus, so might be, yeah, Jair's going to go with them, but Tubby, enough speed. Third and inches, very, very close. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Let's come out and at least look at the QB sneak. Yeah, of course, they pinched the line. Yeah, why wouldn't they? This, uh, can Jordan Love pick this up? Oh, <laughs> do I snap this? We're going to go for it. Jordan Love gets it. Oh, man, that was the that was the most tense half a yard that you will ever see in your life. Double team that guy there. Got to watch uh, not Oreo over there on the left side, though. And the double team proved to be a good move. Tubby's able to pick up nine. He is running good. I take back what I said earlier. He is running very well, um, you know. Can't really be mad at that. And now let's spell in Kareem, who only had one carry earlier. And boy, howdy, it was not a good one. More double teams, though. I like the way that that double team worked on the last play. Let's see if uh, same results will be yielded for Kareem, which all oh, just needed to get to the outside. Not Oreo, number 73, levels us. But it is a Thunderbirds first down. Now that the running game is going, now this could open up a shot. For play action, Zay Jones already has one big play earlier. Maybe we can get him another one. And, oh, he's open there. That's what I'm talking about. Hang on to it, Zay. Well over 100 yards now, you would have to imagine, for Zay Jones. And this, if we complete this double dip, guys, we are right back in this thing. And now we got five yards to go, three downs, potentially four. I don't know if I would. I probably wouldn't go for it in this situation if it came down to it. But I'm going to go back to my little double team method here. We're going to double team up one of these defensive linemen and just run right at him. Tubby. Oh, so close. So close. But only one yard to go now. Look at that press, though. Wow. Still going to do double team. This, this method has uh, proved to work pretty well. One yard to go for Tubby. Let me edit the McDoubles. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Walk in the park. That's what I'm talking about. We are right back in this thing. Completing double dip scenario you better freaking say it we're gonna actually go for two here to make this thing a field goal game it's gonna be wide stick i only have eyes for chris right now sounding like a freaking high school love letter but 
That's how it goes. And Chris hangs on. Not an easy catch at all. He had Eddie Jackson, the free safety, draped all over him. And how about that? Just like that, we're right back into this ball game. But the big question mark remains, which has pretty much been the big question mark of this entire game and maybe even this entire season. Can our defense make a play? Certainly hope so, and we're going to certainly try here. Aiden Leslie, he's to the left of Cameron Moore. Got to watch that. We made running it inside our focus. And will this be a screen? It will not. I don't think. Okay, Moore, he's got three touchdowns, though. Only 118 yards, but he has made the most of his completions. Completing the ball at a high level, even though the yards aren't there, that's that's fine. And now, single back formation here, you got to figure it's going to be Aiden Leslie, but it's not. We're going to cancel blitz with Diaby uh, Jax Vaden. He got cooked there by Mike Evans. Another first down for the Aviators. And it just seems like uh, no matter what we do here in this situation, let's have, we're going to have... Milano man coverage on Leslie, which proves to be a pretty good move as we are able to stop him. Only one yard to go, though. Come on, defense. Come on, defense. Show me that heart. I know that you have it. We're going press with the blitz. It's it's the only thing, only thing I can do in this situation. And just please, please work. That's all I'm asking you. They're changing the play up. We got a motion over Winfield here. Get him in better position. And come on, someone make a play. Pass interference is always an option. <laughs> PJ Reed going to get credit for the stop. That one looked like pass interference to me. I'm not going to lie. But the ref didn't call it. So guess what? It didn't happen. And seeing Braden Mann for the first time in the game. How about that? And also for the first time in the game, we got a chance to tie or maybe go up on the scoreboard. Man, I would sure love to get this RPO game working, which it's looking oh, like yeah. that's going to be the move. Zay Jones. Only three catches, but he's got to be up close to 150 yards. He is having just an all-time performance today, and that's it's good. It's good that he suited up and showed up because we really needed him. And back to my method of, so first and foremost, got to ID the mic, and we're also going to put a double team on this guy here. This is what got us back into the game, so I'm going to ride this thing into the sunset, but that time... They might be cluing in as Larry Ogunjobi sheds his block and drops Tubby for a loss of one. Third and three, very manageable, and Coach is saying draw play to Tubby, so who am I to argue with Coach Damon Sanders? We're going to do, I guess, same thing, right? <laughs> Chris Olave on the press, too. I see it, but right now all we care about is, oh, God, they're collapsing. Yeah, okay. However, rather than punting the ball, which is what a smart man would do. We're going to be aggressive. And we are going to go screen pass to Tubby. Because, I mean, regardless, if we punt it, we're talking about like 20 yards difference of field position. And the risk reward is just too great. So hoping that Tubby can get some blocks and pick this thing up. He doesn't have the speed, does he? No. He doesn't. Well, that's what happens when you gamble. I still feel good about it. Maybe should have put Kareem out there rather than Tubby. Um, the blocking could have definitely been better. It really wasn't good at all. Ryan Kelly back there blocking nobody. And that's what you get when you roll the dice. Didn't go in our favor that time. Got to clamp down and play some more good defense. At least holding them to a field goal. I would be happy with that. Don't want them to score at all, obviously. But if they're going to score, field goal is not the worst thing in the world. And there's Leslie doing what he did in the first quarter. First half, rather, actually. Just killing us. 11 for 129 and a touchdown. He's fired up. That will take us to the fourth quarter. So nobody scored, right? Nobody's, no, we scored, obviously, duh. We scored coming out of the locker room. But we did hold the Aviators off the scoreboard, which we really haven't been able to do for the entire game leading up to that point. But they're in great field position now, so we just got to play a little bit of damage control. Bend but don't break. Allow a field goal. I'm fine with that. It's going to be an outside pitch to Leslie. He's going to score because that's what happens when you make the inside run the focus and the outside becomes vulnerable. Aiden Leslie's got some moves there, some white boy moves. But you know what? When you score a touchdown, you can do whatever the heck kind of dance you want to. And that is that is what we did not need. So my decision to go for it on fourth down, perhaps not a good one. 
But again, in hindsight, I wouldn't do it differently because I felt like we were just in a position where we had to be aggressive. And now we got a pretty sizable 10 point deficit staring us right in the face. Are we gonna really drop to 0 and 3? If we do, I cannot believe it. Game's not over yet, but we're gonna get sacked in a fumble. Come on! Oh my God, dude, Jones, who the heck is that? That's Dewan Jones, big number 79. If he wouldn't have scooped that ball up, I would have been furious. Not gonna say it's the dagger or the kill shot. Ooh, Zay Jones, actually, he's been the guy all game. Could be a quick step drop for him. I didn't really like it, so we'll just go to Waller, but we're hit on the throw. And uh, that's Dior Love, too. And I don't really know, like, it's not a whole heck, heck of a lot that you can do in this situation. I mean, air it out for the verticals, I guess. But Olave up the middle, just that just may have to be the read here. We're going to try it. Come on, Chris, please. It's nearly picked. And uh, got to punt it, unfortunately. Don't want to, but I got to. Maybe pin him deep with the subscriber punter, Jack Mavros. It's a good kick. Oh, boy, man. We we fought back into it for a minute. Again, not saying it's over. But we got a freaking mountain we got to climb now. But you just figure it's perhaps too little too late. I don't know. Not saying that it is. But that's just kind of uh, the feeling that you get here. I need Yaya Diaby to play a little coverage for me. Just guard up this middle of the field. And it's going to be a sack from subscriber. Jay Mongstro and I believe our other subscriber, Silas Vaden, was also in on that one as well. So that is awesome. Job is not done, though. 16 oh, no. yards. They can certainly pick this up if they want to. I'm going to drop back Leonard Floyd. Not playing any type of games here. Uh, it's a screen pass, and it's good defense. Silas Vaden again, number 99. So the window of opportunity is cracked. Got a little breeze blowing in here, hitting me in the face. We got eight minutes, still a lot of football left to go. This, you know, this is not out of the realm of possibilities, but uh, we're going to need some chunk plays where we can't mess around with old Father Time. We know that Father Time is undefeated, and maybe that guy right there, Zay Jones, could be the guy, four for 131 and a touchdown. He might just have to be the guy that we go to on this drive as well. Tub, tubby, 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 I need you to block Tubby and just show me somebody who can get open. It's Oxmall. Making it a third and very manageable. One yard to go. Kareem, I need you to fight like you've never fought before and pick this up. Thank you, Kareem. Oh, does he have the edge? He was fighting. He was finally dropped down there by Buda Baker, but that is very, very good as we get the ball down to Aviators territory. And the good thing about this drive here is we do not necessarily have to score a touchdown. We can go for the field goal. I don't want to go for the field goal. Of course, I want the touchdown. But if duty calls, if it's necessary, we can do that. RPO, show me Oxmo. He's open on the outside. Good block from Chris Olave, but pass came out just a sliver too late. Should have got that thing out to him a bit earlier. I'm going to, oh, oh, man, quarterback sneak. I'm going to at least see what it looks like here. Are they pinching the line? They are, but again, we can go for the field goal if needed. Come on, love, but it's not going to matter. Because Love is going to extend the drive for the second time in this game. Got a score here. Five minutes. That clock is ticking down. Let me see if I can hit. Oh, God. We're going to get sacked. Yes, we. Oh, well. Actually threw the ball away. That's Carl Granderson who leads. Again, leads the SFL in sacks. He was right there. Coach is saying single back PA cross. Zay Jones is the man. He's been getting open all game long. Coach is calling it. I'm going to rock with it. But we got to have some protection back here in order to make this work, which we do. Zay catches it. Bang. Second touchdown of the game for Zay. He's having a monster game, maybe close to 200. And it's going to. Ooh, we should. Should we go? No, we're not going to go for two. That would be dumb. Uh, first, we'll make this extra point. Yes. Defense, where are you at? Did you guys clock into work today? Did you bring your hard hat, your lunch pail? Did you kiss your wife and kids before you left the house? Are you ready to earn your paychecks? Because if the Aviators score here, at least the touchdown, it's essentially over. I mean, I'll tell you what, man. This thing, if nothing else, this thing is fun. I need Perryman. Yeah, need some, uh, some, some man coverage here on Aiden Leslie because you got to figure it's going to be Leslie time. But yeah, yeah, Diaby's there to meet him for one. So that's a good start. I came out dime coverage too, which may not be the best thing, but it is going to be a pass, which is nice. And it's Mike Evans. 
We've been calling his name all game long. Formidable option as a wide receiver number one. Miles Garrett getting in his face. And that was one that we really, really needed a stop on. And unfortunately, we just didn't get it. We're going to go nickel blitz here. But uh, actually, again, going to cancel it and just show man coverage on Leslie. I know it's odd to kind of double team a running back. Oh, my God, dude. Cameron Moore with ice in the veins. All we can do right now is hope to hold him to a field goal. I don't know, guys. I do not know. I'm not liking the uh, the flow of this game here. Maybe if Matt Milano can get back there, it's going to be a Leslie give, and he's actually stopped. Not going to call a timeout yet, but on third and one, they will have to snap this before the uh, two-minute warning. And, I mean, there's – do we just run commit? I almost feel like – you know what? We're going to do it. If we get burned, we get burned. I don't even care. I guess we'll use her up on a safety here just in case. Run commit. It works. Did it work? It's fourth oh, and inches. That was Nico Petey. They're going to kick this. And we will have a chance, actually, to go down. Unless they fake it. I will be highly, highly pissed if they do that. Unless they don't get it. Oh, block kick. Ooh. Got the animation. But it's a six-point game. Two-minute drive coming up. It's a fun game. Whatever happens, it's a fun game. But we got a chance to go down here, score a walk-off touchdown to win this game. Can we do it? Starting with the screen. It hasn't really worked, you know, the way that I would have hoped it. Oh, God, pressure is so there. Tubby catches it, though. He's got some blockers. I mean, a gain of five, not the worst thing in the world. We also don't want to score too quickly, too, now. Obviously, you know, just scoring is the most important thing, regardless. But we ideally wouldn't want to score too quickly because we don't want the Aviators to get the ball back. That would be bad. And uh, come on, Darren Waller, please get off of your block. He actually caught that. That was a high degree of difficulty. Ah, uh, man, tried to get Olave on press again, but I guess they must have learned from their mistakes. So I guess we're rolling out and probably looking for... Darren Waller here, or maybe you just take off and run. Jordan Love get out of bounds and got the first down, so that was a mission accomplished. Going PA crossers, it's risky, so I'm going to go ahead and put Zay Jones on a drag route in case we need him, and I think that's actually going to be the move. It's an accurate pass, and we're going to go ahead and call our first time out. I mean, we're in good position here, but obviously, you know, job is definitely not done at all. Still got a lot of work to do. Maybe Bills Verts. That kind of seems like could be the right call here. Uh, I'm, oh, I don't want to throw it towards Tremaine Edmonds, though. We'll just see who gets open and see what happens. Mike Oxmall, you got to hold on to that, brother, and he dropped it. That could have been it right there. Man, I really wish they were pressing up on Olave, but they just refused to. So Darren Waller, he's probably going to be the guy. Oh, please don't pick that. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And I'm not really sure. Dagger, I guess, might be might be the call here. Maybe, maybe Oxmall can get open quickly. Got to watch and see what Tremaine Edmonds does. He's probably going to be the determining factor. We're going to get sacked by not Oreo the subscriber. There you go. Not Oreo, you may have just won this for your team. Last ditch effort, I know I've called this play like three times today and I don't care, we're trying to get our first win so you better believe your freaking britches. We're looking for Zay Jones, but gotta have the protection. Please, Zay, can you please make a miracle happen? He does! Oh my God, Zay Jones is our freaking MVP in this game. But it is not over yet as we have no timeouts at all whatsoever. We have no timeouts. Cannot take a sack in this situation. Cannot take a sack. That is the I'd rather take intentional grounding than a sack. And we're going to have heavy pressure there. Joey Bosa off the edge. So let's just see what happens. I think Olave. Oh, did we overthrow him? We had him in the corner. But we overthrew him. I'm running that same play back, man. I'm running that same play back. If I can get Olave in the corner, I'm going to hit him. I have to hit him. Please, Olave, earn your bread and butter. Moss somebody. Four seconds, and this is going to be effectively the last play of the game. 
It's for all the marbles here. We're going TE attack. It's been a weird game. I know I've been calling a lot of my own plays, but again, trying to get our first win of the season. And this has just got to be Waller all the way. It's got to be Waller all the way. Come on. We got to get it to him, though. We got to get it to him, bang! Oh, walk off touchdown. Almost took a sack. Oh, my God. Look how close Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa was. Oh, wow. Darren Waller and Jordan Love complete. Now, we got to make the extra point still. So, I guess... Are they going to ice me? All right. I got to lock in. Cannot miss this. Not going to happen. Justin Tucker is going to boot it right through. And what a way to get our first win of the season. You got to be kidding me. Still a lot of question marks. A lot of questions that the defense has to answer to. Offense came up big in this one. And Aviators, I am sorry to do it to you. 39 to 38, but what a thriller. Cameron Moore going to give the high fives. You see Dior Love, number 28, back there. But I don't know if I could take uh, 15 more games of that <laughs> this season. It's not going to be good for my blood pressure. My doctor won't like that <laughs> at all. And look at these two dueling it out. Three touchdowns apiece, no interceptions. I like to see that because I've been throwing a lot of those with Love. But Cameron Moore, only 190. He was efficient. But Jordan Love with that 357. But this is the reason why uh, Cameron Moore probably only had 190 yards. Aiden Leslie, 15 for 152 and two touchdowns. Tubby had two touchdowns as well. Started out hot in the first half and then kind of cooled down a little bit. Love did some scrambling of his own. And then Nico PD only got the uh, the one attempt for one yard. But give Zay his flowers. Not, not to be confused with Zay Flowers. This is Zay Jones. Seven for 197 and two touchdowns. Wow. Sam Laporta, Michael Wilson, they had touchdowns. Darren Waller, the walk-off came winning touchdown. Mike Oxmall, four for 25. Tubby, three for 15. Aiden Leslie caught a couple passes as well. St. James went two for 11. And then uh, defensively here, tackles for loss, not Oreo. Shout out to Not Oreo. Three TFLs and two sacks. I mean, that's a heck of a game. Silas Vaden on our team. Subscriber, one TFL and a half a sack as well. Jay Monstro, same stat line. One TFL, half a sack for him as well, too. Uh, Dior Love had four tackles, but no, you know, game-breaking plays or anything like that. Jax Vaden had three tackles as well. And overall, yeah, that was a thriller. Jack Mavros had two punts for 101 yards. Wow. Net average of almost 50. That's some good punting by my man, Jack. And now let's go ahead and check out the subscriber stats around the SFL here in week three. Sentinels get the win over our division rival, Brooklyn Nighthawks. So that is always great to see. A couple subscriber QBs dueling it out here. Rocky DiBernardo is up there in passing touchdowns and passing yards. Uh, Derek Daragosa had a better stat line, but ultimately the win does go to the Sentinels. Derek had two touchdowns, no picks. Rocky went one for one and they both had about the same amount of yards 244 and 231 san antonio voyagers get the win over the elks that's the team that we beat in the super bowl last year if you didn't know a lamar jackson led team is always going to be good but they got uh two running backs let's just go to the voyagers two the colors are too similar so we got matt hayward here went 17 for 47 for a touchdown and they should also have another subscriber quarterback as well Austin Gutierrez, but he did not get any touchdowns, probably because he's one spot lower on the depth chart, I would imagine, than uh, Mr. Mac Hayward. Austin Lumberjacks, too, lost to the Louisville Desperados, so if nothing else, our division rivals are losing as well, so the AFC East just might not be very good this year, I guess. And uh, Michael Yakin went 143, 143 yards, one touchdown, so not really a great game for him. And running back Darian Wolcott, he went nine for 38, no touchdowns, averaging 4.2 yards per game. All in all, this was a very defensive-minded game, it would appear. Virginia Beach Blues dropped to the OKC Antlers, and we'll get a look at our new subscriber quarterback and see what he was able to do. C. Tucker, he had 238 yards, two touchdowns, but those two interceptions, probably what did him in at the end. Looks like Jordan Addison, who he's in a little bit of trouble in real life. He was their big target, Mark Andrews, too. So he got some guys involved, 
but ultimately suffered a first defeat since joining the SFL to the OKC Antlers. Dublin Shamrocks, the dubs. They do, in fact, get the dub over the Paris Black Knights. That one was about as close as our game was, it looks like. And QB subscriber Jesse Buzo went for 341 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. They also have a subscriber, a wide receiver. Don't tell me. Okay, well, at least he, he played. Okay, Uku Tree Rat went two for 20. I was trying to clean up these uh, subscribers that we see with no stats, man. But I have to continuously go into the team's depth charts and reorder them. It's a whole big thing. And lastly, Ty Royal Smoochie Wallace, the corner from Miami. He had four tackles, four solo tackles. And the dubs get a nice dub. San Juan Tigers beat the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods here. We got subscribers on both teams. Quarterback Lionel Moore from Arkansas. Only 185 and no, no touchdowns and no picks. It looks like uh, it was a heavy... Heavy running get running attack from both teams. And then, of course, we have subscribers on both sides of the ball for both teams as well. Mr. King Love here had four tackles and a TFL. And then also Flash Parker, the free safety, had four tackles of his own. St. Louis Bulls get the win over the Orlando Orbits. And we'll get a look at one of the best, uh, stat-wise at least, one of the better running back subscribers in the SFL. Actually, two on both teams. So Johnny Waters went 17 for 78. No touchdowns, but a good average yards per carry. And then Austin Kringle, who was top five in uh, rushing yards or touchdowns, one of the two. He went 16 for 68. Could have used some of those touchdowns in that game as uh, the Bulls pretty much ran away with this one. Six total subscribers in this matchup here. Oakland Wizards do get the win over the Albuquerque Armadillos here. And we'll take a look first at the running attack. We got I am Al Musa. He came to play today. A lot of carries. He was a workhorse, but 23 for 80 with also those two touchdowns as well. I am, he balled out last season, came in towards the end and uh, really, really made his mark on that one, I would say. And then we got a couple subscriber receivers here on the Armadillos, Jaden Taylor. He went three for 53 and had a big touchdown as well. And then also tight end Bjorn Jeffrey. He went two of 18, no touchdowns or anything like that, but still, you know, apparently uh, it was enough. Or wait a minute, who won that game? Yeah, it was Oakland, my bad. Okay, so apparently it wasn't enough. I don't know, I had that one backwards. And uh, we'll get a look at, we have subscribers on both teams here. So Arturo Esquivel, the linebacker, he played good. Five tackles and two TFLs. You love to see that. Good good showing from him. And then on the Wizards here, we have Michael Briner, who had six tackles and a sack. So that's awesome for him. And then also cornerback C. Ben, he had two tackles as well. Salt Lake City Bisons, who we played in the AFC Championship last season to advance to the Super Bowl. They get a big win over the Honolulu Dragons. And quarterback Mason Buchanan, who has been stellar his entire stint in the SFL. 264 through the air and also two touchdowns as well. And get a look at the receiving game here. We got tight end James Briner of the Dragons. He went three for 14, so nothing, nothing too crazy there. And then defensively, we have Zachary Nolan with 13 <laughs> tackles and also three pass deflections. He was all over the field, but you can't do it by yourself. And ultimately, uh, Dragons do suffer the loss to the Bisons. But the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, uh, who are in our division, and they are just packed full of subscribers now. They get the win over the Canton Condors and newly added quarterback to not the SFL, but to this team requested a trade. 213 and a touchdown. So you cannot argue with those results at all. And then uh, receiving, we got several. We got Alexander Klobleck went four for 61. No touchdowns, but still a good game. Yeezy Fuentes, nice to see him back in the touchdown column. He went four for 44. Caleb Hayes, the brother, he went two for 21. And then we should have, I have no idea why Braden Keys is not getting the ball. He's on the depth chart, but the Condors just <laughs> refuse to target him. And then our free safety or safety duo rather for the Condors, Eli Sakowitz. He had six tackles and a big TFL as well. And then Mike Collins had five tackles, but I also see a nice pass deflection. But unfortunately for us, because they're in our division, the Melbourne Dreadnoughts did get the eke out a win, I would say, against the Condors. Montreal Monarchs, they just beat us slightly a couple weeks ago, but uh, they were not able to fend off the Tokyo Golden Eagles and quarterback Leo McGlizzy, who had himself a day against us, admittedly. Not so much in this one, only 184 and a touchdown and also... Looks like a key, key interception as well. And we cannot forget about our subscriber, Nick Stoyer. He had three for 24, no touchdowns, and 
Monarchs uh, <laughs> really could have used them in this game, it looks like. Anchorage Snowhawks down the Houston Oilers. Oilers Nation packed full of subscribers as well. Lucas Thomas had 170 yards through the air, two touchdowns and a pick, but uh, wasn't enough. And halfback Justin Shepard for the Snowhawks, 18 for 75 and also a big Big touchdown as well, so you love to see that from uh, the Snowhawks. And then getting a look at the receivers here for the Oilers, there is several. We got Kyrie Brooks. He went three for 22, not a lot of yardage, but had a big touchdown in there, which, you know, that sometimes is the difference maker. And then Floyd Butler, he went one for 11, so nothing uh, too crazy to write home about there. Cornerback Mason Smith of the Snowhawks had six tackles, and we also should have another subscriber here. Yeah, Thomas Francisco, strong safety for the Oilers. He had four tackles, so no picks or anything from the defensive players, but, you know, still a pretty decent showing, I would say. And if you're wondering why it says two next to this, uh, look, you guys know I have no problem showcasing my uh, lack of talent, if you want to call it that. But at the beginning of this game, my controller was messing up. If you watch the college EA Sports College 25 series, it was happening to me in that one too. And the beginning of the game was just a disaster. I was like one minute in, I was like, screw this. We're not doing it. It's not happening. So that's, that's that, you know, no explanation needed, but sometimes I offer one anyways, but get our first win one and two taking on another one and two team and a couple subscribers next week. So make sure you guys tune in for that. We got subscribers week four, week five, week six, just all over the place. So should be an action-packed couple of weeks. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.